The following program is presented to you by the Hope Channel Network. Believe it or not, God has a plan for your life. Included in that is how to manage your money. Money is an integral part of our lives. We're going to learn how to take care of it as God takes care of us on today's Between the Lines. Welcome to Between the Lines. I'm your host, Samuel Thomas. Joining with me today is Heather Quintana, our co-host. We're going to speak with Ed Reed, a powerful individual who has given us so much uh, background in the past on how to manage money. He has a new book, Faith and Finance. This is not just any kind of book. It's a workbook. It's a, it's a method for bringing small groups together and to learn a biblical perspective on how to manage money God's way. Welcome, Ed. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. What is faith and finance? Because that's, that's like a new, new approach for me. Well, everybody has to manage their money. And unfortunately, this is a thing that you can go all the way through elementary school, high school, and even college and never be required to take a course that will teach you how to manage money, even though it's, everybody needs to do it. So what we decided to do was to integrate good, sound money management principles with principles from Scripture. And so, for example, we have a 12-lesson uh, small group Bible study, or a family could study it, or an individual could study it, or you could do a prayer meeting series or a Sabbath school class, whatever you'd want to do. But the material is right up to date. It's a brand new series. It includes the uh, economic meltdown, if you please, and the, the stimulus package and all that stuff. I mean, it's that new. Uh, but we have not just tithe and offerings. That happens to be only one chapter in the book. But there's things like how to organize your life for success. For example, everybody has three segments to their life. They have the er a learning years when they're getting their education. They have the earning years when they're doing their professional work. And then they have the returning years when they give it back to God or to other people. And if you don't do the learning part right, Welcome to working your life at McDonald's and living in a used mobile home. In other words, the idea is you can plan your life for success from the very beginning by getting a good education and, and going through and learning biblical principles of money management. The Bible is full of things that will help us if we follow them. And I would contend, and I'll show you as we go along today, that people who follow the biblical principles will not be having nearly as many problems as others in our economic turndown that we see today. Now, the economic turndown has really impacted people around the world. Oh, yes, indeed. When we talk about addressing those needs, we're talking about obviously has to be something that's, that, that's helpful for people on various levels uh, of the economic scale. How do we have one principle that fits all? Well, the interesting thing is that there's an economic scale to be true, but in the last 10 years or so when we had the great uh, building in the housing market and so on growing up and up, even out of proportion as you probably are aware, we had about 5% of people that became very rich and we had the poor people getting poorer and the middle people survived by borrowing. That's really what happened. And it's a very unfortunate situation. In fact, the Bible has two references that would indicate an end time scenario to all of this. And one of them is 2 Timothy, the third chapter, in the last days men will be selfish and lovers of money. And then also the fifth chapter of the book of James where it talks about the wealthy taking advantage of the poor people and so on. For example, the Washington Post just recently had an article about how much people make in America. And of course, some people, because of their status as stars, and make lots of money. Tiger Woods, like $110 million a year. Oprah Winfrey, like $95 million a year, and so on. But the average worker in America makes $31,800. Now, this is the average person that goes to work every day. If you're a professional person, have an advanced degree, you could maybe make $100,000 a year. I'm going to show you an illustration now that's totally incredible. If a professional person works 40 years in that middle section of his life and his professional, the earning years, he will make about $4 million, the gross income that he would make. Recently, it was discovered that some of the uh, bankers on Wall Street were getting $40 million bonuses for one year, which is 10 times more than a professional person with a doctorate would earn his entire lifetime. 
This is obscene. It's just absolute madness. So does, does the Bible address some of these obscenities, I mean, these economic disparities? Oh, it does indeed. Uh, that's why the Bible says it's difficult for a rich man to enter heaven because if you can understand that in the United States the homeless population is growing, that people are sleeping in their cars or under bridges and so on, and other people making millions and millions of dollars, totally disproportionate to the value of any one person. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. It's incredible. But the problem for most of us is not that we're making too much money, but not enough. Well, that's also true. However, listen carefully. I was just in Ukraine, and I was trying to demonstrate with the PowerPoint program how poor my family was growing up. And we were poor. We had an old 53 Chevy pickup. There are four boys and mom and dad, so six people. Three rode in front, three rode in back. For six years, that was our car. And the reason that we had it is because it pulled a travel trailer. And, and it wasn't, we weren't on vacation. That was our house that we lived in for mm -hmm. six years. Anyway, when I showed this picture, instead of realizing how poor I am, all the people gasp. You have a car. Right. You get the point? Sure. Yeah. The whole idea is it's, it's relative. relative. It's but relative. the idea is if you live on a little, if you live within your income and you manage, you save a little bit from every portion of your income, don't get over head over heels in debt, etc. Any person at any level can live better than if they live beyond their means. That's right. That's the whole point. And you mentioned that so many people exist by borrowing. Oh, yes. What is your advice to those who don't know how they would make it without um, getting student loans or a mortgage payment? Are all, are all kinds of debt bad or are there some things that are reasonable investments? That's a good question. Uh, let me address student loans just real quickly. And we have a whole section on that and getting an education and so on and how to address it. But I will just tell you something very interesting. I would suggest that even though uh, education is expensive, it is also very valuable to life. Because if you don't get an education, you're going to be minimum wage during your whole life, pretty much, mm -hmm. unless you're a genius. And education is important. And we're going to yeah. talk more about that when we come back after this break. Stay with us. We're with Ed Reed today on Between the Lines. For more information about any of the books presented today on Between the Lines, visit your local Adventist Book Center or go online at www.adventistbookcenter.com. If you're interested in receiving a copy of today's book and live in the United States and Canada, call 1-800-765-6955. Again, that's 1-800-765-6955.